Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. Uh, you guys all ready for the Word of God today? Yeah, you ready for the Word? All right, come on, let's get into our faith quote. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. Stand to your feet. Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. And I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am. Set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do. Then I will see that it is reality. Amen. All right, come on. High five your neighbor again on the way down. Pastor Michelle, come on up. All right. All right. You guys doing good today? How come we got nobody on the front row up here? Usually we have people on the front row today. Oh, I know what it is because they know this is first Sunday of the year, right? And they're over there and they know that pastor gets a little excited about the first Sunday of the year. This is the wet section, right? Nobody wants to get wet, right? Pastor Gian will get all exciting. So uh, some of you notice my, my beautiful bride up here with me. And uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to tag team. Well, I don't believe in women ministers. You with the devil. Because I'm telling you, this woman preaches better than most men ministers that, that I hear. And uh, so we're going to be tag team, teaming today. And, and it, always the first Sunday of the year, I always share what I think we have a theme or a mentality that we need to focus on as a body of Christ, uh, not just here at Forgiven Church, but I think the body in general. And so uh, as I was sharing uh, this with my wife, she was really in agreement on this. And, and, if, and so we just started going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And, and then she goes, man, we got a tag team. And I go, that would be a great idea. And she's like, no, no, no. I, I go, no, we got to do that. <laughs> so it was her idea. All right, so uh, this, this is going to be good. So are you guys ready for this today? All right. How many of you guys got ears to hear what the Spirit of God is going to say to you today? Amen, amen. I don't, I'm telling you, I do not want anybody to leave this place the same. But I want us to leave challenged, edified, encouraged for more of God, amen, to manifest in our lives. So go with me, if you would, in the Bible to Revelation. Oh, you went to Revelation. Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. And I'm going to lay a really, really quick foundation in these first few scriptures to get us the mindset that we need to have as believers. And over these next several weeks, we're going to be laying a whole lot of foundation to help us get where we need to be. Because how many guys know none of us have arrived yet? Right? But like we said, thank God we've left. But we all need to continually still grow. I don't care where you're at with the Lord. We still all have growing to do. Amen? So, in case I wanted to wander. Oh, okay. So here we go. Revelation chapter 2, one verse here. It says this. And actually, I'm just going to just skip around. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. It says this. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, he's talking to churches plural, right? So if he's talking to the churches, he's talking to us. And I'm going to be going through what he's saying here to the seven churches here. And he says this, to the one who is victorious, everybody say victorious. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. In the church of Smyrna in verse 11, it says this, 211, it says, whoever has ears, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious. Everybody say victorious. I will not be hurt uh, at all by them in the second death. Now here, you can remember, he's saying different things to all these churches. There's warnings he's saying to these different churches. He says, I know you're doing this, I know you're doing this. He goes, but I still hold this against you. Or I've got this or this or that, and you've got to change this. But there's one common theme he has behind all the churches. And that's what we're going through here is this. Look at verse 17. The next church, the Pergamum, in verse 17, it says this. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is What? victorious I will give some of the hidden manna I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it guess what you guys are going to get a new name 
He says, and it is known only to the one who receives it, right? To the church at Therata. The next, it says this in verse 26. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end. I will give authority over the nations. Verse 29 says, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, right? Chapter 3, the church of Sardis. In verse 5, it says this, the one who is victorious, everybody say victorious, will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. And we, we've talked about this before. Other translation says, I will never erase their name from the book of life, which means your name could be erased from the book of life. But notice, if you live in a victorious life, that's never going to happen. Yeah. Amen? He says this, but will acknowledge the name of my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the church of Philadelphia in verse 12, it says this, the one who is what? Yeah, victorious. I will make a pillar in the temple, or I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Verse 13. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you, do you see a theme here? Yeah. See, he's saying different stuff to all of them, but there's one thing that is in common here. To the church of Laodicea, in verse uh, 21, it says this. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, he's saying different things to the churches, and we all should be reading what he's, what he's reading to all those churches. But the one thing we've got to understand is this. What's the main theme he's talking to everybody about? To the one who is what? Victorious. I will allow this, 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 and this. But if you're not what? Victorious. Then those things are not going to happen. And do you notice how Jesus even finishes it off? Because Jesus is saying all this stuff. Yeah. He finishes it off and he says, just as I was victorious. Now, you be victorious. See, we as believers, God has called us to live a victorious life. Not a compromising life. Not a mediocre life. Me mediocre? Mediocre life? Am I saying that? Mediocre life. But a victorious life. See, when I look at the church and I'm not judging, I'm just looking at fruit. I'm walking. When I look at the church, I do not see a victorious church. I see a church that looks just like the world. And matter of fact, there are, th there are people that I see in the world that are not believers that I think are living a, a, a much more victorious life, if, I could, if that's saying it right, than people who are in the church. Do you know why? Because the people in the church don't know what kind of life they're supposed to be living. And I'm here to tell you this. If Jesus says, I'm expecting you to live a victorious life, that's my plan for you to live a victorious life, then that ought to be our plan. To live a victorious life in everything. See, we need to, we need to have vic victory in our marriages. Yeah. We need to have victory in our finances. Yeah. We need to have victory in all of our relationships, right? We need to have victory over addictions, right? We got to have victory over sin in our lives. And quit allowing all the compromise and all the what ifs and the but this and the but that. And just live victorious like he said we can live. He never would have told us to live a victorious life if we couldn't do it. We got to get rid of the, we got to get rid of the excuse, well, I'm just human. No, 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 you're more than just human if you're a Christian. Amen. See, just human beings without the Spirit of God should live average lives. Those who have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of them should be living what kind of lives? Victorious. A victorious life. What's the definition of victorious, son? That's your definition. Um, I was going to say, too. Uh, oh, okay. There you go. You got to push the bottom, bottom button right. on the bottom. It's usually on for me. Um, I was just going to say, too, the more you were talking about, you know, living a victorious life, because it's really easy to hear 
Uh, I'm just listening to the response and we're all amening in the right places, but because um, we've been trained well, but it's, it's beyond just knowing the word too, it's believing it. Mm-hmm. We have got to get to a place where we believe what God says is truth. He said, my word is truth. It is truth. And so instead of just amening it, we got to get to a place where we believe that God meant what he said. Right. God's plan for our life has always been victory. Right. Always been victory. Defeat is never in God's plan for your life in any area. Come on. Failing is not God. Defeat is not God. Being overwhelmed and worn out and quitting is not God's plan for our life. God's plan is victory in every area, in every circumstance, in every hard place, right. in every obstacle, every difficulty. God already had a plan for you to come out on top, come out victorious. That is truth. Mm-hmm. That is truth. And sometimes we look at one another and we, and we come to a conclusion that maybe Maybe God didn't mean it really like that, or victory is only when we go to heaven. But God said, Jesus said in 1 John 4, he said, as Jesus, as God is in this world, so are we. Right. So are we. That is a present tense fact. As Jesus is, right he is more than a conqueror. He is victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He beat Satan at his own game. Come on, he stole the keys to hell. He is victorious. He said, as I am in the world, so are you now. Yeah. Now. Not in one or few things, not here and there, but all the time. When we wake up, we are victorious. We have a spirit of a victor. Right. We have a spirit of a conqueror right. in any area, right. in every area, big or small. See, if we really believed the word of God, like he's talking about, if we really believed it, I'm talking about Monday through Saturday, if we really believe the word of God, we would go into the fighting rink a little bit different. Right. We would step into the ring a little bit different if we believed that we are victorious. If we believed it's a fixed fight, if we believe that God meant what he said, if we believe that we are more than conquerors in any fight, if we believe that, we would step into the ring differently. We would step in with a different demeanor. Our demeanor tells the devil what we believe. Right, right. How you approach a problem lets the devil know what you believe. Your demeanor says everything about you. Saying amen in church does not change your problem. Believing God and going into a fixed fight knowing it's fixed is what changes things in your life. It's believing that God meant what he said. What if he meant what he said? Right. What if he meant that you are victorious? What if he really meant that as I am right now in the world, so are you right now where you stand? What if God meant that? That we are already victorious in him. See, it's not us doing it. It's God in us due to the definition I'm getting. Jesus said, I've come to the world to give you life and life more abundantly. Not just life. And the problem is people fall away from church because it's not reality to them. They're bored with God. They're bored with church. They're bored with a powerless gospel. They're bored with living like everyone else lives. Some people get saved because they know they can stay like the world and come to church on Sunday because they see no difference. But Jesus said, it's not life I've come to give you. It's not average I've come to get you. It's not status quo I've come to give you. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Abundantly. That's overflow in every area. That's victory. That's a conquering attitude. That is winning no matter the odds. Amen. Amen. Victory in Jesus. The definition of victory getting there. Having conquered in a battle. Right. Victorious means having overcome an enemy. Jesus said, I've overcome the enemy for you. Having overcome an enemy. Victorious means to be the conqueror in all things. Victory is to gain the superiority. Sounds like we're the boss. To gain the superiority. Victory means to succeed and to triumph over and to win at. Victory means mastery over. Mastery over. Victory means a success in any struggle, against any obstacle, and in any difficulty. A success in any struggle, against any obstacle, and any difficulty. Right. Do you want me those scriptures? Yeah. Deuteronomy 20 says this. Deuteronomy 23 through 4 in the living. It says, don't be afraid as you go out to fight today. Life is a battle. Life is a fight. We are in a fight. 
We are in a spiritual fight. You don't ever have a day off. You might feel like you do, but that is deception. You have an enemy and you are in a fight. And God said, don't be afraid as you go out to fight today. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies. And he will give you the victory. Right. He will give you the victory. Notice he didn't specify what kind of enemy. He just said your enemies. Right. Anything that comes against our life or the work of God in our life is an enemy. Any situation that's contrary to the word is an enemy. And God said, I will give you the victory when they come against you. Right. Joshua 10, 8 and 9 says this. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of your enemies. I have already, I have already given you the victory. Right. I have already, before Joshua ever fought a battle, before he ever lifted a sword, before he ever made one step to the battlefield, Jesus said, God declared, I have already given you the victory. Right. I have already done it. Not one of them will be able to stand against you this day. That's good news, guys. Hallelujah. Go Next ahead. one. You got one more? Do I? Yep. Oh, yeah. Psalm 44, 7 says this. You are the one, God, who gives us the victory over all our enemies. God, you are the one that gives us the victory. The victory over all our enemies. What is victory? It means to conquer. You're the one that helps me to conquer all my enemies. Say all. all. Say all. all. That's sickness. That's disease. That's lack. That's fear. That's low self-esteem. That's depression. Come on. That's financial right. ruin. Right. That's a messed up marriage. That's a messed up body. It's a messed up heart. Right. He said he's given me victory over all. Right. All. Right. Big or small. Right. They've been there a week. They've been there 10 years. Right. All. Right. Something that looks impossible, something that doesn't seem possible. Right. All. Right. We got to meditate on the word of God. He gives me victory over all right. my enemies. Yeah. I wrote this. It says, unless you know how to look at life the right way, you will never head in the right direction. Right. I'll write that down. Or I'll say that again for those of you who are taking notes. How many of you guys know we ought to be taking notes in church? You took notes in school. You took notes for everything else that had to do with the world here. But y'all be taking notes for things that are eternal, I'm telling you. But unless you know how to look at life the right way from victory, right, you will never head in the right direction. So many people go into situations and they see themselves already defeated. There's no faith in, 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 in that. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by what? Sight. Faith means we're doing what God tells us to do. We're seeing it the way God sees it. If God says, I've already given you the victory, then we need to put our shoulders back and our heads up high, and we need to go marching right on in, whatever it is that we're dealing with. Amen? Very, very important. Look back at uh, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. If not, it'll be on the screen behind me. 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. And this is something that we actually went over last week and even last year. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. Remember we talked about that last week or even last year? Remember Jesus said, don't tell me you love me, but what? Show me you love me. Well, how do we show a God that we love him that we can't see? By doing what he tells us to do. Amen. And he says they're not burdensome. Why? Because we love him. We obey him because we love him. Why do I do things she wants me to do? Why do I stop by McDonald's when there's a long line for just a Coke? Because I love her. Right? When the line's all the way out to the road just for a Coke, it's because I love her. Right? Very, very, very important. But now let's continue on in verse 4. Look what it says in verse 4. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now that, now that doesn't mean, well, as long as I believe Jesus is the Son of God, that automatically makes me an overcomer. No, it doesn't. How many of you guys know the devil believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Doesn't make him an overcomer because he's already defeated. What makes you an overcomer is doing what God tells you to do and believing you can do what he tells you to do. Right? Look at verse 4 and 5 in the Amplified. It says this on the screen. It says, For an angel of the Lord went down and appointed seasons 
uh, unto the pool. Well, no, that's not it. It's supposed to be First John. All right, we'll forget that part. That's the wrong one. It's supposed to be First John. Go, go to the, uh, oh, yeah, she has it right here. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Who is it that is victorious over or that conquers the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, who adheres to, trust in, and relies on that fact? See, see, the thing that we're really talking about this year is this, and if you want to say, what's our theme for 2016, what is it? It's living in victory from victory. Living in victory from the victory. How many of you guys know Jesus won the victory? But see, too many people are not living in that victory. They're living in themselves, they're living in circumstances, they're living in everything else but what he told us to do. And if you start living in victory from the victory, you're going to start seeing a whole lot more victory or success or overcoming in your life, right? Let's go over the definitions of that, of, of, uh, of overcome. Okay. Unless um, you got something else you want to add. Yeah, just real quick. Um, add it, honey, add it. I'm not going to do a whole lot, but um, I saw this quote. He was talking about, um, you know, the way we approach things, and it's our mindset. You know, the Bible says, as you have believed, it will be done unto you. Not as what you can quote, not what the pastor says, not what your friend said, what you believe. What you personally believe will be done unto you. Your life follows what you believe. And someone made this quote. They said, renewing your mind or changing your mind to circumstances means to exchange your thoughts and your opinions about that circumstance for God's thoughts and God's opinions right. about that circumstance. That's good. We have to change the way we see things, the way we perceive things. And the word is what does it. We can't just pray for you and it happen. You have to want to be victorious. Right. You have to want to be a conqueror. God expects us to live a conquering life, but the battle we're always going to have to face is going to be in our own mind. We're going to have to get over the stuff in our own mind that tells us we can't win, that tells us it won't work because the enemy comes, especially if you've been standing for any length of time, you can get very weary in doing good. You can grow weary. You can grow tired. And the enemy will come in and convince you that it's not going to work for you this time. And some, for some reason, as believers, we're okay with that. Right. Too often, we're okay with not getting the victory. We're okay with living beneath God's plan for our life. I have another scripture I just want to read real quick, and then I'll give you the definition. But there was one scripture I had, and it's in 2 Corinthians, and it says, But I thank God, 2 Corinthians 2, but I thank God who always leads us into victory because of Jesus. Right. I thank God who always leads us into victory because of Jesus. Wherever we go, God uses that to make clear what it means to know God. Mm -hmm. My victory tells the world what it looks like to know God. Right, right. Thanks be to God who gives me the victory that helps me be the light to the world because me winning, right. me winning in life, not succumbing, not being beneath things, not being the same old person, but me winning right. in life shows the world what it looks like to right. know God. Come on, that's right. The whole point of our life is to be a light. Right. To be salt. What makes people want the God that I sing about and worship? Not my lip service. Right. Not me preaching to them. Not me throwing the word down their throat or condemning them. What shows them God, what shows them what a real Christian life looks like is every victory I have wrapped up in my life. Right, every right. victory, everything I have conquered, everything I have overcome is advertisement for God. Right, right, come on. He uses my victory to show the world what it looks like to follow God. I just right. like that. That right. was just, right. he does it because he wants to be manifest. How much more does he right. want me victorious right. if he wants the world to see him? Right. If his goal is that the world would know me, how is he going to do that? Through your victories? Right. Right. Through my victories? Right. Bringing glory to the Father? Right. It shows God right. to people. Right. Amen. The overcomer defined. Here's right. a, for overcomer. Or uh, it means, um, just the word overcome means to have the victory, to be a victor. It means to have the superiority. It's very close to a victory. It means to succeed in dealing with a problem or any difficulty. To be an overcomer, to overcome something means to get the better of it. To prevail over it. To control it. 
Have you ever thought about the, the authority you have to control the outcome? Right. To control how it plays out in your life? Right. To control the end from the beginning? The Bible says that God declares the end from the beginning. Right. God already knows victory is yours at right. the end. Right. You imagine the power he's given us as an overcomer to be able to control how this thing turns out. Right. Right. See, the enemy has no control over your life except what you give him. Right, right. Let me, let me jump in here really quick. All right. Hold that thought. Water. You're going to eat your water? Remember, remember, remember the Bible said this. He says, how much more will those who are in Christ Jesus rule and reign in this life? How much more? That's victory. See, and don't, look, I'm not, like I say, I'm not judging everybody. I'm not, like, but I, myself included in sometimes, but I'm telling you something. I don't see that how much more in the church today. I see, I see a very powerless church, not because they don't know about the gifts of the Spirit and, and because they deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm just talking about they have no clue who they are in Christ. If you don't know who you are in Christ, you will never win. But Never the thing win. Is, you're not really powerless. Yeah, that's the thing. You're not right. Are you? So we are right. You see a powerless church. It's not powerless. Right. That's the deception right. that the right. enemy makes us believe that we have no control. Right. That we have no no say so. Right. In life. Right. And we appear powerless, but the enemy knows we are not powerless. Right. Right. The enemy of your soul and of my soul. The reason he's at us all the time is because right. he knows we are not powerless. Right. Right. So we're not, it's just what we believe. Right. The reality is that we are not without ability right. to conquer in all things. Right. It says to master. It means, you know, to overcome means to master. It means to defeat something. When's the last time you defeated something in your life? Right. When is the last time you mastered something in your life? Fear or doubt or unbelief or worry or depression or financial lack or physical symptoms. When was the last time you mastered that right. and took control over that in your life? Right. Because we have the, the ability, we have the right to live that way. Right, right. We have the right. It's not a cockiness and it's not an uh, egotistical thing. It's a right. It's a confidence. As a child of God because right. it's not me that lives. It's not me doing it. Right, right. It's Christ who lives in me doing it. I live from Christ's victory. Right, right. I live from his overcoming. Right. I live from what right. he conquered. It's right. Christ in me. Amen. Come on, sister. Not Amen. me. The problem is right. we look at ourselves. Right. We look at our own failures and our weaknesses and all the things we've messed up in the past and here comes another trial we're going to screw up. But it's not us doing it. It's relying on God in me to live through me. Right. It's God empowering me to do it. Right. It's his victory coming through my life. Right. He's trying to reveal my, himself to the world through my victory. Right. He's helping me right. overcome in life. Overcome means to overwhelm something and overpower. It means to outdo something. When was the last time in our life that we were the last one standing? Right. It means to outlast. When was the last time you outlasted your depression? When is the last time you outlasted the symptoms in your body? When is the last time you got mastery over something in your life and you were the last one standing? Right. I mean, something to think about because it's Bible. Mm -hmm. It means to crush under your feet. To conquer, to overcome means to crush under your feet. Jesus said he's put the enemy and all the demons and everything under our feet. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Go ahead. I'll just keep going. Go right ahead. Uh, share, that, share those couple scriptures. Sometimes our enemy could be people. It feels like it. I mean, we've all been talked about. We've all been made fun of. Persecution comes with the walk. Cool. But, but sometimes we blame God. Sometimes we question. And let's just be honest. Sometimes like, God, why did you let that happen? How many people have said that? Mm -hmm. God, why did you let that happen? 
But this is what God said. He said, if anyone attacks you, if anyone attacks you, it will not be because I sent them. Right. Right. See, if it's not of God, that means I can get victory over it. Right. Yeah. Right. If it's not of God, then I can conquer it. Right. If the attack wasn't sent from heaven, then it's from hell. And Jesus, my Jesus, already defeated hell. Right. Right. So if God says if they attack you, it's not because I sent them. That's setting me up for victory again. Right. That's a battle. I'm getting ready to win again. Right. I don't have to cower down to people or persecution or the opinions of man. I just have to trust that God's going to work this thing out for my good right. because God is for me. Amen. He said, if they come against you, it will not be because I sent them. Whoever attacks you, God said, whoever attacks you will be defeated by you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Whoever attacks you. Whoever attacks you and your walk with God and your steps of faith that you're taking, whoever comes against what you believe, whoever comes against you with their mouth and their accusations, some people it's in courtrooms that people lie about you, but whoever comes against you, God said they will be defeated by you. Right, right. Read that Amplified, Philippians 4.13 in the Amplified. Oh, it says, I have strength for all things. <laughs> In Christ who empowers me. Mm -hmm. In Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. Say, I am ready for anything. I am ready for anything. And equal to anything. Mm -hmm. Say it. And equal to anything. Through him. Right. Say, I am ready for anything. I am ready for anything. And I am equal to anything. I am equal to anything. Through him. Through him. I am ready for anything. Right. I am ready for anything. I am anything. equal to everything. Right. Through him right. who infuses inner strength into me, I am self-sufficient in, in his Christ sufficiency. sufficiency. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You guys okay with this today, this little tag team? In? This is, we're giving you a little example of our pillow talk. <laughs> we're doing some pillow talk up here. right? Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 31, it says this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? And that includes victory, guys. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies, or just as if you've never sinned, right? Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. And look what it says here. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Can I tell you that's the way the world looks at the church? They're, not, they're no good. They're just they're weak. They're just sheep to be slaughtered. Weak, powerless. But look what he says here. No, in all these things we are, say we are, we are. say I am. I am, more than conquerors through him, through who? Yeah. Through him, through Jesus who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor this present nor this future nor powers neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will uh, be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, he begins that verse in verse 38. He says, for I am convinced. Man, are you convinced? Are you convinced that his goal for you is to live a victorious life? Are you convinced that no matter what comes against you, you got the victory? Amen. Nothing can separate us. Nothing, 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 nothing. Now, we do know the truth is, though, you can walk away. You can walk away. But nothing else can do it. Nothing else can separate. Nothing else can come in to steal, kill, and destroy. 
you got the victory. You have all been called conquerors. So we need to start living like it in every area of our life. Every area. Very, very, very important. You got something you want to share on that? Um, no, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, the, the men of old and the women in old, the Old New Testament. We hear about all the victories that they got with God. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at some of them like David and, and uh, Moses. And, you know, you think of Peter. You think of all these people and Paul and... Um, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and all these people that did great things for God. And sometimes I'll read the Bible and I think, God, you know, I wish I knew you like that. Right. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever read the Bible and thought, you know, they're old covenant people. Right. They didn't even have God in them, but they knew God would give them victory. They right. trusted God. When God said the victory is yours, I will fight for you. This is not your battle. This is mine. Just be still and right. I'll do it for you. Right. They believed that. They believed his word. And they opened the mouth and they declared victory before it ever happened. They would right. prophesy to the right. people and say, this says the Lord. God is with us. We're going to win. Don't you worry about it. Gird up. Let's get out there. Let's start with some praise and worship. Right. Let's get the praisers out there. Let's sing. Let's shout. Let's declare our victory before we fight. Because God right. said, right. God right. told right. me to tell you that he is with us. Right. And the battle is not ours, but it is God's. Right. And right. they used to just believe God like that and win victory after victory victory after victory just because they believed the right thing right right and they didn't have God in them they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them to remind them of stuff they had heard see the Holy Spirit's job is to remind us right, right. of stuff we have learned and been taught he takes what he hears from the father and he reveals it to us right 24 7 mm -hmm. we can tap into the heart of God we can hear the heart of God we can hear God declare I am with you but the Old Testament people didn't have that right they had to wait for God to show up to a man, and the man declared to the people, and the prophet, they just right. believed that that's what God meant. Right. And so they had victory after victory after victory. And so I think sometimes, like, God, why couldn't I have lived then? Why couldn't I have been with the people of Israel and watched you part the Red Sea and watched you drop manna down? Why couldn't I have watched that pillar of fire right. and the cloud and all the stuff that you did? Why couldn't I have been in the lion's den with Daniel and watch you show up and show out and deliver this child? Right. Why couldn't I? And I got thinking about it, and I do that often. My mind will go there. But then I read this scripture, and I thought, you know, God is the same God right. today right. that he was with Daniel. Right. It's right. the same God today that was with David. Right. It's the same God that was with Moses. It's the same God that was with Mary. Right. It's the same God that was with Peter, James, John, and Paul, and all the apostles. It's the same God that lives in me right now. It's the right. same power the same God and so I wasn't an Old Testament saint but I'm in a better covenant right. that's established on better promises right. and God said I will never leave you and never forsake you that means the same God that was with Daniel in the lion's den is with me in my lion's den right, right. the same God that right. walked with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego through their fire is the same God that walks with me through my fire right. and I read this and it says in first chronicles it says and the Lord gave David victory right. everywhere he went Went. everywhere right. the Lord gave David victory everywhere he went and right. it's the same Lord right. that I serve right. it's the same Lord that lives in me right. who does not change right. he is the same yesterday today and forever and if he will give David victory right. everywhere he went then he will give you and me victory right. everywhere we go right amen come on come on come on that's good guys man this is good I don't know about you but we preaching ourselves happy telling you let's finish over here in John 16 John 16 and we're just laying the foundation of what we're getting into this year guys because what we need to do is is uh, our whole goal for these next few weeks however long this goes on is for people to get a paradigm shift and we've talked about that what is a paradigm shift it is a mental change of a situation and the paradigm shift we need to have is a mental change of who we really are. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever see Jesus fret anywhere he went? No. He never worried. He, he was never concerned. He never did. Why? Because he knew he had the victory because he knew he had a right to walk in victory because he knew who he was. What's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over and expecting different, different results. results. Right. How many are tired of losing? Right. Right. How many are tired of being conquered? Right. 
How many are tired of dragging it on Sunday with your face to the floor because life stinks? Right. Right. How many are tired of losing battle after battle and fighting the same enemy right. week after week, right. month after month, year after right. year? Right. We got to yeah. do things different. Yeah. To go into this year the same way we went through 15 mm -hmm. is not going to bring different results. At the end of 2016, we will sit here right. and agree and say, yeah, I'm tired of being defeated. Right, right. Right. Help me, Jesus. Right. It's in our mind. He's already helped us. Right. It's spending this year getting closer to God where God can whisper, you are victorious, right. baby. You are an overcomer. Right. You are already more than a conqueror. Right. I declare the end from the beginning. You are already a winner. Right, right. Imagine if we heard God speak that over our life every day instead of listening to our own voice say, you screwed up again. Right. You messed it up again. Right. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 14, it says, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Right. Don't you like that? Right. The Lord will fight for you. Just stay calm. Another version says, the Lord will fight everything for you, and you won't have to lift a finger. What's our part? Believe in him. But, but in believing, there is action following it up. He's, he, he's given us all the answers. All the answers has been released. He gave us Jesus, and then he says he's given us everything else that comes with him. Everything that we need for life and what? Godliness. He says he has already released to us. John 16, 33, it says this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. He didn't say some, some things in it. He's overcome all of it. Yeah. Right? Look at the next translation on the screen. It says this new living. I have told you all this so that in me, or you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. So we know things are going to come, right? Yeah. But we remember, just because you decide to get sick and tired doesn't mean you're going to need to stay sick and tired. Right? right? He says this. But take heart because I have overcome the world. The message says, I've told you all these so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. We do have an enemy. And the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Thank God we've got a, an overcomer. His name's what? It's Jesus. And we've got to live our lives in and through him. And he says this, but take heart, I've conquered the world. Go ahead and read the Amplified up here, hon. Amplified says this. Notice it says take heart. Yeah. Get a hold of your heart. That word right. take means to take uh, with force. Take on purpose. Take hold of your heart before it gets away from you. John 16, 33 says this in the Amplified. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the world, you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Get right. a hold of courage. Right. Find courage. Right. Get confident. Get certain. Be undaunted. Unmoved. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you. Right. And I have conquered it already for you. Right. For you. Right. He right. conquered the world for you. Not for him. Right. He didn't do it for him. He was already the conqueror. He didn't come for him. He did it for you. Right. He did it for me. Right. So we could live in victory. Right. He said, right. get a hold of your heart. Get a hold of your fear, your panic, your doubt, your unbelief, your worry, your complaining. Get a hold of your, your, your temptation to be moved by what you see. Get a hold right. of yourself. Right. And be confident. Right. Why am I confident? Because Jesus who lives in me has already overcome this thing for me. Right. Amen. Right. And that's why we're supposed to live by the spirit, not by the flesh. Yeah. There's always the battle going on. But the thing about it is, is if you were living by the spirit of God, which is inside of you, which is created in the image and likeness of God, you have all that you need, all the power you need, all the strength you need, everything you need to win and live a victorious life is inside of you. And this ain't no, no new age teaching. It's Bible. This is all Bible. But you know, it's amazing how you, you read a New Age book and they all talk about the same stuff. They just don't give Jesus credit yeah. or give God credit. He's the one that started this stuff. Right. See, the thing about it is, is we got to quit looking at the outside circumstances of why we don't live victorious. 
Well, start making wise decisions. Start living according to what he said you could do. Yeah. See, this, this, like I said, this year is about what? Living in victory in all our, all our situations from the victory. If you try to live in victory in and of yourself, you will not make it. It won't happen. It won't happen. You've got to do it from the perspective of what Jesus has already done for us. And if we start living like that, you're going to start seeing some changes in your life you didn't think were possible. But one thing I love about the Bible is the Bible says all things are what? Possible, possible for those who what? Believe. believe what? Believe in his word. Yeah. Believe in the victory that, that, that rightfully belongs to us. Amen. How many of you guys are ready to live in victory? You're ready to walk in victory. It's time that, 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 that the body of Christ wakes up and realizes who they are, the giant that they are. Man, that the sons and daughters would realize what Christ has really done for us. It's not about the cross. It's about the blood and the resurrection. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's still power in the blood, people. There's still power in the name of Jesus. And no matter what situation or trial you go through, it has to bow to the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Why don't you pray? Close us in prayer, hon. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come to you right now. We just thank you. Um, thank you, Jesus. For allowing us the word to have it written down and having it passed down and protected so that we could get a hold of the word and we could hear your heart, that we could yes. hear the heartbeat of heaven in 2016, that we could hear what you declared thousands of years ago on our behalf. Yes. God, we thank you that we are getting a revelation that we are already right now more than a conqueror. We're not just masters. We're more right. than a master. We just don't outdo things. We more right. than outdo things, right. God. We don't just have victory. We have more than victory. We're above right. it. We've, we've defeated them and then some. God, we thank you that we can do all things this year in you, through you, by you. We know apart from you, we can do nothing. But we know in you, right. staying hooked to you, God, that we are equal to anything. We are ready for anything. We can overcome everything because it's your sufficiency, God. It's you in us. We thank you that you unveil our eyes to see the truth of who we are as we stand here. God, help us to see a glimpse into heaven. Help us to see who we are. Heaven in us. Help us to see on the inside, God, that this is a reality. It's not a fairy book, right. fairy tale book. It's not a history book. It's not a nice story. But God, it is our life story. Yes. It is our future. It is our destiny. It is who we are called to be. And so I thank you that the DNA of an overcomer just manifests yes. in our life this year. God, we just call forth victorious people yes. in this place yes. this year. God, I thank you that every yes. situation that has been getting the better of us in Jesus name we just say we declare that we have victory yes. over you in the name of Jesus we speak to marriages we say we have the victory right. over bad shaky right. marriages right. finances you will turn around in right. the name of Jesus right. we declare healthy strong bodies in this place yes. we declare strength for every day yes. God we thank you for mercy that is new every morning that your grace empowers us where we are weak you are strong Yes. where we lack you are perfected in us and God we thank you that you reveal to us that we are not missing any good thing in you but we are complete in you right here yes. where we sit where we stand every breath we take we are more than a conqueror and we can do this thing yes. and we give you all praise glory and honor for it in Jesus name. yes and everybody said amen. amen you guys ready for a good year I'm telling you, you know, everybody says this, or not everybody, most people say every year is going to be the best year of their life. We said that in 2010, 2011, 2013, 2014, 2015, this could be the best year I ever had. 2016 really can be. I don't want to hear about the good old days. I want to hear about what's happening now and the victories that we're hearing about over and over and over I can't wait for a service hunt where we sit there and we say, who's got a testimony? And all of a sudden, a hand goes up, a hand goes up, a hand goes up, a hand goes up. And next thing you know, all we got is testimonies all service long. 
man, I, I believe God and this happened. 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 All these people said this was impossible and this and this and this and all that started happening. See, the, the services need to be what again? Celebration services of what God's doing in and through our lives. Amen. Thanks for the pillow talk, hon. That was fun. We had some happy, cheerful givers in the house. Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship. We invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.